What's going on you guys? Aaron here from Purchase Capital. It's 10.01, this is our morning live stream. Thank you so much, Joe, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, this video is sponsored by Departures Capital's Investing Academy on Teachable. We've got our VIP Trader, VIP Trader Pro, and our six courses. Feel free to check them out. I won't say too more if you have any questions. Feel free to message me. Let's get straight into things. And I wanted to start by posting the link to our Discord group. Thank you so much, Joe. You're awesome. Um, Yeah, let's take a look at ACB and uh, Canopy in just a sec. Don't forget to hit that like button as well. Thank you. <clears throat> just going to post a link in our Discord group. And get some music up, and then we're ready to roll. <laughs> Hello, Sandy. It's another gloomy day here. When are we gonna? F when are we gonna see more than one day of sunshine? I don't know. All right. So we're seeing the markets down quite substantially again. Dow falls triple digits amid U.S.-China trade standoff. So. Trade war causing volatility. This is actually the opposite of what I expected. So let's take a look at the camera stocks. I'm getting bad allergies. If you wonder why I look so tired, it's actually I'm not tired. I just have bad allergies. Seven days sunshine in Montego Bay. Jeez. That sounds fantastic. I'll take that. <clears throat> All right, so we are still seeing a fair amount of green for the cannabis sector, despite the fact the markets are down over one full percent. Death, death, Bubba Kush. Never tried that one. Never tried that one. I actually did pick up a, an interesting one last night. Didn't try it though. I fell asleep before even thinking about trying it. It's called Green Dragon. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that one. But anyways, Viridian Pacific, Shine Co, Kieran Life Sciences. Kieran Life Sciences is down, back down to three bucks. That's one that I do want to look at. NBEV hovering around 5, ACB 11.72 today. Mild red in the cannabis sector. It's actually not a bad day for, despite how badly the markets are selling off today. Um, I'm going to assume it's mainly industrials that are bringing the markets down. We'll take a look at that in just one sec. Alkaline water, flat. 48 North in the green, Delta 9. Alifia Health up another 7.4% after its huge run yesterday. That stock has just been doing phenomenal. All right, so I'm going to pull up comments and then uh, we will be able to talk to you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't forget to hit that like button, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. We're almost at 60 people already. It's pretty good. So, what's up, Joe? What's up, Ron? Miss Sammy Swing Trade. Evil Boy for Life. Lils. Mike J. Manuel. <clears throat> so, 48 North. There was a, I don't know how to explain it, but 99% of the warrants were exercised. I believe there was, it was like a warrant date or something. And most of the shareholders exercised their warrants, buying more stock, which meant lots of confidence in the stock. It was up to over 20% at one point. 
40 North is looking pretty strong right now. But I want to read, get into why the Dow is down over 1%. So the Dow is the, where's the Dow? Dow's down 1.23, NASDAQ down 1.4, and S&P down 1.3. I do want to see first top losers. Let's go. Broad vision. Not that many Chinese companies this time. Let's look at the major, the world indices. I just want to see what Asia did last night. That's great. Australia's in the red. Okay, so let's, I wanna get to China. China, China. China's, China was green yesterday. But that's because uh, the markets rallied into the close. I expect another red day though. All right, so I wanna read this article, then we'll get into a couple cannabis stocks. Then we're gonna jump back to the other portfolios. The markets are not really showing any signs of much recovery just yet. A pullback, we're, we're due for a pullback for a long time. VIX is up 23.45% today. All right, so Dow falls triple digits amid US trying to trade standoff. Wall Street traded lower on Tuesday with Dow falling by over 100 points for a second straight day. Markets worried that neither the US nor China would back down in order to reach an agreement at the current trade dispute. Chinese public wants an agreement, but meanwhile is prepared for other potential outcomes, including a temporary breakdown in talks. Da -da -da, the comments came after US Trade Representative Robert Lingzer confirmed that US will raise tariffs on 200 billion of Chinese imports from 10% to 25% as of Friday, <clears throat> a step that sharply escalates the trade dispute. So, we'll see what happens, guys. Gold dipped a dollar ten. The U.S. dollar index gained 0.2 percent. So the U.S. dollar is strong. It's BS for commodities. So VMD Medical Care Powerhouse. Good morning, Max. What's up? We'll take a look, quick, quick, quick look at FSD for you. Hopefully it's still up. Can't promise it. You're so awesome, Joe. <laughs> Gotta go to work in 30 minutes. Please let me know what you're thinking about doubling down on ACB. Alrighty, we'll do that right now for you. Buying Aurora cannabis before earnings. So you know what, Joe? I'm actually ready to put out a video we are going to be putting out two to three more ACB videos in the next couple days. As we know, earnings are coming up on the third, <coughs> sorry, 14th, I believe, 14th. And it's such a tough one. I mean, you sound like you want to double down on ACB right now. Never buy ACB after earnings, the stock. It's, personally, I don't intend to buy any ACB. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm not intending to buy ACB before earnings. I will I will be doing a couple videos about buying before, before earnings and the pros and the cons. But it's just, um, I feel like the markets are due for a bit of a pullback. I know I've been saying that for a while. We're hovering around all-time highs. We'll take a quick look at the charts here. Um, ACB, it's it's just such a tough call, man. I'm I'm sorry. Like, ACB is still my biggest position. I won't lie to you. It's just a hold for me right now. We'll see what the numbers come out at. I think they'll have a I think they'll have a good quarter in terms of the numbers, but there's just not enough conviction for me 
to buy it before earnings. Yeah, I mean, the, the long-term chart looks great. I know what you're saying, the five-year chart. <clears throat> and it's definitely gone through quite a, quite a long period of consolidation here, right around 11. We're testing support again, right around 11.70. If I had to pick one, if I had to pick a stock to buy, if I had to pick a cannabis stock to buy right now, ACB would definitely be top three. That is if, and that's just hypothetically speaking, right? Um, I wish I had more, I wish I had more stuff for you, Joe, but I will be, like I said, I will be releasing two to three more videos coming up this week on potentially one today, tomorrow, and definitely Thursday and Friday. I'll be gone Thursday and Friday, but I'll be dropping more videos when I'm gone, just pre pre recorded. So, and I've said this a couple more times, ACB around 11, 1150 to 1250. I think it's a great price, but at the same time, negative earnings, no new news, could bring the stock down to, could bring the stock down another couple bucks. So that's why I'm neutral. If it was to dip a little bit, then I'd look to add. But right here, just taking a look at my portfolio and how much I have, I'm just not looking to add any more. But I don't necessarily think it's a bad trade at all. We'll see what happens though, guys. You also said you wanted to t take a look at CGC. I haven't looked at the charts for CGC in a while. Or weed, because I want to look at it in Canadian. <clears throat> oh, WMD. Man, what am I doing here? All right, so only thing is if ACB announces a deal with earnings, unlikely but possible. Yes, very true. And I've always said that. So they could have some news with coupled with earnings, which would obviously be awesome for the quarter. And that's why I continue to hold as much as I do, because it's exactly so. <clears throat> What's up, Josh? My voice changes every day. I swear it's getting deeper. It's weird. Can it be at 65? Can it be at 65? A uh, little too high for me right now. That dip to 55 was great. If I was looking to buy Canopy, I, I definitely would have bought that dip when we dropped down to 55. Back up to 65. But I think, <clears throat> personally, I think Canopy's gonna sell off a little bit more. I think Canopy is going to sell off at least back down to 60 bucks, if not a bit more. Just because the markets feel like they're ready to just sell off a bit. One thing I do want to compare though was something very interesting. So we'll check that out in a second. We're just talking about Aurora and Canopy right now. I want to compare the S&P 500 to two weed stocks and one ETF. It's now that S&P is down 1.36%. So guys, we're going to take a look at April. I really only care about April. So there's a chart for the S&P 500 for April. We're going to compare that to ACB. We're also going to compare it to Canopy and then HMMJ. <clears throat> Should be somewhere in the middle. This is a new song. So what I'm seeing, what we're obviously seeing is, we'll change the colors for you guys a little bit make this red. 
So cannabis outperformed the markets by about 14%. Cannabis had a good month, but the sector has underperformed the S&P. And ACB has led the way down. I believe that's the purple line. We'll change it to blue. Dipping a little bit more than HMMJ. So ACB's underperformed HMMJ by just a fraction. It's a couple tenths of a percent. At least for the month of April. So if we start to see more volatility, then I think we're going to see the index pull back a little bit more. Deeper than the S&P. And Canopy, there's a much bigger gap here for Canopy. So I think the gap's going to narrow. Just my opinion. Anyways, <clears throat> the, the, the cannabis sector is going to move with all these big company earnings coming out real soon. So we'll see. Don't forget to hit that like button, guys. Thank you. On to some, on to some more stocks. So we're seeing Kiron pull back. I'm in RNX, small position, small, small position in RNX. Now's the time. That's one stock that I'm interested in adding to. Jill De Silva. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which one was that? Can you post that? But without posting the interview, I can kind of understand what you're saying. Buffett doesn't believe in charts. He believes in buying a business that makes money, has a good balance sheet. You know, he likes the company, what they do, believes in the brand, which totally makes sense. I mean, sometimes that, that's fundamental investing versus technical or technical trading. Thing is, nowadays, everybody wants to be a technical trader. Everybody wants to be a trader. <laughs> yeah, old fashioned. But I think combining both strategies is the way to go nowadays because a lot of people look at technicals, a lot of people look at charts and you can't ignore that either. But I definitely do think that it's somewhat overhyped, it's somewhat of a fad. Every company wants to just make that next trading app, make that next trading service and they've really overhyped the whole trading aspect of investing. Well, trading's not really investing, but anyways. Trading's trading, investing's investing. But long story short, Kieran Life Sciences looks like it's testing more support at three bucks. So I would love to see Kieran fall back to 250. Like Kieran's been volatile, it's been all over the place, but it's made lower highs. And I think I will finally add some Kieran to the portfolio. If it sells below three bucks, my only concern is if it's already in a downtrend and it just keeps dropping. I like the market they're in. There's not enough stocks that cover this market. So just want to point out, Kiran on my watch list now, ACB down 2.68%. So. We'll see what ACB does for the next couple days, but it is selling off today, which makes sense. I mean, the markets are selling off. They're not really recovering, and ACB's underperforming the, uh, the S&P by about two times today. Canopy, a little bit stronger. Alifia Health, fantastic bounce. Fantastic bounce for Alifia Health off a of buck 30. That's awesome. So let's get into uh, see what's on the news for today. Heritage Cannabis closes 17.3 million units of offering. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Terrison raises 52 million. Canopy Growth creates new division for medical business. Kronos, Gr Kronos Group to develop generation cannabis vaporizer dev devices in Israel. There's the Kiran offering. All right, so we'll check that out. And that's it for the new cannabis ventures news. ACB has the same shares as FSC, 1.3 billion. Is it 1.3 billion now? That's also why ACB really hasn't moved that much. But we've known about dilution from the start. No, it's just 1.01 billion right now. At least that's what it says. But Got a little more news. Heritage closed 17.3 million offering of units. So we'll just read the green, or there's no green in this one. It's pleased to announce that it's closed. Previously announced bought deal offering. What's the price? 53 cents. Heritage Cannabis. Can. Pretty close to that offering price. Heritage Cannabis has actually done really well recently. Right around 50 cents, that one's looking pretty good. Next, Terrison raises 52 million selling shares at 764. Short another short article. Successfully completed the book build for its previously announced upsized private placement with orders totaling approximately 52 million. The company is issuing common shares in the private placement at previously announced price of 764, a 5% discount from Monday's closing price. TerraSend. TerraSend. I've heard of TerraSend. I haven't looked at TerraSend in a little while. Let's just check in with the stock. So eight, currently trading at 8.03. TerraSend. Canada-based company, Canada-based cannabis company, create and deliver products and services that meet the evolving needs of the medical market. Okay, so medical cannabis. <laughs> Thank you once again, Joe, you're so awesome. Smash the super chats, peeps. Show love for our boy. <laughs> have a great day. You too, Joe. Have a great day. And I really hope ACB does good for you after earnings. <laughs> I really hope that ACB goes up. If you do, double down. We'll be covering it for sure. You can, you can bet on that. I just got to blow my nose one sec. Joe's, yes. Yes, Joe, have a great day. I hope it all comes back to you in the form of ACB going up like crazy. That'd be awesome. Ah, all right. So we take a look at Terrasen Corp. Next company, Canopy. So Canopy Growth creates new division for medical business. Is pleased to announce Spectrum Therapeutics, a new global brand that will encompass all of the company's ongoing commercial Medical and clinical research operations, including Spectrum Cannabis. Most recent addition to Cannabis Growth Medical Portfolio. Incorporating, incorporating these entities into one unified ecosystem will integrate the company's medical efforts as one global healthcare enterprise. All right, so we're just going to read the green. We're going to read the green, which is basically everything summarized by Cannabis Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Mark Ware. We've always been a company that provides more than medical cannabis to our patients. We also offer education for patients and healthcare professionals and are engaged in research to define the safety and efficiency of cannabinoid medicines and the development of new cannabinoid-based treatments. Integrating our commercial medical business and clinical research arm under a single entity better reflects our position as a healthcare company that's driving further acceptance of cannabinoids 
as mainstream medicine and addressing the medical and wellness needs of our patients worldwide. Cool. So, yeah, oh, I forget what I was going to say. Canopy has a lot of great people on their board. That's what I was going to say. And on the team. <clears throat> but I still think it's a little bit too pricey. Blue Balls Pharmaceuticals. Is that a real company? <laughs> Sorry, man. Last article. Kiran to raise 25 million share selling shares at 290. Kiran Life Sciences enters into a $25 million bot deal equity financing. You know who I'm missing, guys? I'm missing John Doe. Or what is it? Joe, John Smith? Where is that guy? He makes the funniest comments. We need a good laugh or something. I'm out of coffee. Damn it. Okay. Still got some tea though. Give me a minute. Hope this tea can wake me up. The next generation won't smoke weed, they'll drink it. Look at this, look at this article. Province Brands, interesting. All right, so a medical cannabis company with core operations in Latin America announced today that it has entered into an agreement with CACOR Genuity Group, BMO Capital Markets as co-lead underwriters and joint book runners on behalf of a syndicate of underwriters to purchase 8.621 million common shares of the company on a bot deal basis pursuant to a short form prospectus offering at a price of $2.90 for gross proceeds of 25 million. That's cool. So Kiran at 290. I'd say that shows some pretty good support in the stock. What do we got here guys? Med Men and Blows. John Smith's Blue Balls. <laughs> MedMen equals Sour Line. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Apologize for all the coughing, one sec. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> Mad men. Ooh, we're down to 342. Mad men's getting a little scary now. I hope we don't fall off a cliff. But, you know, we're the lowest we've seen it in a, quite a while. At 340. Basically, back here in, um, when was it? December of uh, last year, MedMen sold down to 315, I believe it is. We'll, we'll try and zoom in a little bit closer. Right around 315. But we're right there at the end of that candle. And we'll see if we hold on to things. Right in around 340. So it's, uh, it's hard to say. What's up, Port Gat? It's just my allergies, man. Not a problem. It's just my allergies. So when the whenever the pollen goes away, usually in the summertime it gets a little bit better, but I'll be fine. So that's it for that. That's it for that. MedMen at 420 continues to slide. We'll see if we can catch a bounce. It's not looking too great for MedMen personally. I'm just holding on, but getting a little scary. So next thing I'm going to do, we're going to check in with our other portfolios because I haven't even looked at my other portfolios just yet. Damn. And then um, we'll get, we'll check in on all that stuff and then we'll get right back to some, uh, some requests, whatever you guys want to look at. Yeah, you're right, Sandy. All right, so 
not too much movement going in on the small cap. So this portfolio is small to mid cap, precious metal miners. A lot of those are exploration companies. And we've got some, these are graphite, graphite and palladium companies. Not too much going on there. Copper is mixed. First quantum minerals down 4.6%. Haven't looked at that in a while, actually. I want to take a quick look at first quantum minerals. And we've got our defensive portfolio doing all right today. Brookfield property, biggest decliner. Haven't looked at that stock in a while. Brookfield real estate. Biggest gainer, Severia Corporation. What else we got? Utility Co's. Not having a great day. The whole market's down today. Even the utility sector, not as bad as the overall sector though. We're seeing Kirkland Lake Gold up 4.1%. And our broader watch list, Alifia Health, up 4%. FSD's in the green. Oxy, MYM. Endeavor, Silver, and First Quantum, two biggest losers. JD.com keeps tanking. I want to look at that too. Chinese, Chinese tech, Alibaba's held on pretty well at, a, at 184. Tencent as well. They're at 47. Just a few more. So I'm gonna assume that Fang's down. Biggest loser in Fang, JD, Weibo, Alibaba, Tencent, followed by Apple, Facebook, Netflix. Not too bad of a day for Fang. Just following the index. And that is pretty much it. The only last thing we wanna look at are the precious metal miners. So the biggest gainer on the day, Victoria Gold, GT Gold, and then the rest. RNX down 10% to 36 cents. What the hell? And things just taking it today. Neo reports after the bell. Hey, Laura, it's been a while. Thank you for tuning in. How are you doing? <sighs> TGIF. Four, 48 North does look great. I see the stock running this summer, hopefully. Mike Peters. Yeah, it's not a good day, man. It's not a good day. Did not cover a free yet. Thank you, Jordan. All right, so we're gonna do away with this watch list because we don't need to take a look at it anymore and we'll put um, a free up there. Jordan Oaks, thank you for reminding me. Afria down to nine bucks. Let's take a look. You know what? I like the sell off in Afria. Afria at nine bucks. It's tempting for me because I, because I've traded Afria twice. I bought Afria at, I believe it was eight bucks. And I think I bought it again at like 10 or something. This was way back, like this was somewhere 2018, I forget. Free has been one of the best trades I've done. I Because I don't do many trades, as you guys might know. The best trade on a free, <laughs> emphasize trade. Um, was selling at 21, 21.50, 21.50, something like that. It was pretty good sell, but then um, I watched it fall all the way to four bucks, didn't add to it, and then got out at 14. So I wouldn't feel so bad about buying some Afria at nine. My only hesitation is the, the whole market. So, Things are much different now for Freya. They still have good assets. Also one of the only three companies in Germany, so. But I don't know, man. I kind of want to pick up a Freya when it goes to eight, if it goes to eight. <laughs> Would you be the horse or the guy leading the horse to the stock market watering hole? So what's up, Robert? 
I kind of... I kind of don't get that joke. Do you mean... Would I be... The guy leading someone to the stock market? Spanish cold... You mean coal? Cold mining? Coal mining company? A Frio. So that's all I gotta say for a Frio. And nine bucks looks pretty good. I'm just scared of the market. I'll admit I'm a pretty conservative investor. I think that the market's gonna keep pulling back. If we don't get any positive news about this trade war, Trump's tightening things up. We could see a bit of a pullback. I think we could see lower prices. Maybe a better buying opportunity soon. Second day made $22 exact with TVIX. Yeah, Laura, uh, TVIX has been skyrocketing up another 25% today. <laughs> You're a crazy VIX trader. Man, I traded the VIX a few times. Fast money on the VIX, but... I remember I was trading ETFs. VIX ETFs. But then um, that one day that the VIX ETF just... Was insane. Next company. So, Afria, all in all, I think it looks good. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean by water hole, Robert. Like it's. Like it's risky or it's it's a scam or, or what do you mean? First quantum minerals. Nice slide in first quantum minerals. Damn, 16 to 12. I like this company. I wanna add this one to my portfolio but I would love to see this thing go to 10 bucks. Watering, okay. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Try my best. Just an honest approach to investing. <laughs> Not so much. Not so much trading. It's news. I like to talk news. I like to talk about how I feel about a company. Not what I think it's going to do next week. Although earnings are fun. It's always fun to cover price movement too. But yeah, so... Man, I hope that first quantum slides to 10 bucks. I would love to see this thing continue to sell off. I think at 10 bucks, you know, we're going to see some awesome support in this. Pretty visible support line here at 10 bucks. I've liked First Quantum ever since I interviewed their CEO and founder. Let's just draw that at 10.08. We'll go back a little bit more than the 10 year chart here. Yep, 10 bucks. Come on. I want to see first quantum slide a little bit more. This is my next copper play. Solid company. It's just been too expensive recently. So we'll see what happens. Brookfield Property Partners. What dividend are we getting yet on the, now on this thing? 6.29%. Brookfield's a great company. A little pricey right now though. The doctor described his condition as stable. No, I didn't hear that, man. Drop a link. Drop a link. Tea time tutorial video. 
<sighs> I know. I'm so lame. I need to do this. I've just had so many things. I wonder if I can get that out today. I know you guys have been asking for this. I'll do it for you guys <clears throat> as a joke. I'll be serious in the video. Kind of serious. Best I can. We'll just go over the different teas and my favorite teas and all that kind of stuff. That's hilarious, Mrs. Sammy, Sing Mrs. Sammy Swing Trade. Your, your account name is also pretty awesome, Mrs. Sammy Swing Trade. I know, man. I need... Oh, anyways, Brookfield Property Partners. This is one stock that I've added to the portfolio since uh, the first quarter. And it's gone up nicely. Sitting on some pretty decent gains, but I do think it could pull back a little bit. Maybe to 26, where I'd probably add some more. <clears throat> That's it for that one. Brookfield Property Partners, one to look at. I think it will do better in the, in the later part of this year. Fairly defensive. High yielding. JD.com, I just wanted to bring it up because it's continued to slide. This was one that I was on the fence about selling. I sold somewhere around 28.50 for a quick four buck per share profit, bought it at 24.50. And I just wasn't confident in the whole China thing. I wanted to reduce my positions, but I did think that the company was pretty good. I still think it's undervalued. I just see too much risk with China right now in the trade war. But positive news could send Chinese stocks higher again. And we'll see more volatility. I just don't want to be holding tech if the market does really sell off. I want to be holding dividend paying stocks for the most part, which is where I've shifted most of the money to. <clears throat> Ianthus is dirt cheap now buyout target. Maybe ACB buys Ianthus. ACB is going to buy the world, man. Let's take a look at Ianthus. Sun T. Sun T. Three billion shares of AC. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Imagine in five years, ACB was still trading at 1170 but they had like 5 billion shares and they owned like three times as many companies. And there's like 10 billion worth of goodwill on their balance sheet. <laughs> That'd be something. Ianthus looks pretty good around these, around these levels, right around six bucks. Ianthus was one that I wanted to own, never bought it because I thought it was too pricey. We're starting to pull back. This is another one. There's so many stocks though that ah, there's just there's just so many companies in the cannabis sector that have a compelling story. I just can't own them all. ACB putting in a bid for my homegrown. Hey, I don't know if you talked about it, 48 North. What's your opinion with all the cattle coming for the company? I like 48 North. <clears throat> I think that I, I'm not, I don't own it. Sorry. I don't have any room in my portfolio to own more growers, I would say, but I think it will do well the later part of this year. The, the, the amount of warrants that were exercised, big positive. <clears throat> Anon, <clears throat> Anon, Anon. I would love to see your, your stuff. So guys, that's it for the stuff that I'm looking at. We got a few more minutes left, five to 10 or however much time. We've got 69 viewers also, that's awesome number. Don't forget to smash that like button. Let's see if we can get to 69 likes. Oh yeah. Um, what do you guys want to look at? Feel free to make any requests with what you guys are looking at or what you want me to look at. 
Otherwise, I'm just going to browse around. Crude down 1.59%. Gold's flat. Copper's taking it again. Neo earnings after the bell. Man, 69 live viewers. Oh, shoot. The nose has killed me. We have found one more tissue. This is good news. Perfect. Haven't looked at Nokia in a while. Ooh. What are we yielding? You know what? That's one thing that I'm underweight on is telecoms. And you know, 5G is coming. And I do think 5G will be uh, big. So might take a closer look at telecoms. I know there's been a lot of videos on YouTube recently about 5G, coming 5G, how to capitalize on it. Um, long story short, Qualcomm, AT&T, companies like that. I want to take a closer look, but I do think they're too expensive. Yes, still hold on to Encana. Let me look at CHK in just one second. I want to see what's up with Nokia. This is one stock that still looks like it's, I mean, it's slid like crazy from 650 to five bucks, but over the longer term, now nah, that trend looks broken actually. I don't know what to say about Nokia. I'd have to believe in the actual business, which I haven't done enough recent research to know, but it's not really a company that I'm looking to own. I like the dividend, but I also don't like US companies that pay dividends because here in Canada, we got to pay additional tax on those dividends. So, Intel, CHK. Yeah, Chesapeake Energy. We'll take a quick look at that one. Not too big a fan of those oil producers right now that don't pay dividends. I know this is a pretty big company. And the stock hasn't done that well recently despite the rise in oil. See, a lot of these oil producers have lagged the price of crude like crazy this time around. Last rally was much different. Crude shot up last year, oil stocks were flying. It was it was good. Then oil tanked money just poured out of the sector now we're seeing the crappiest little recovery especially in the Canadian oil sector so I don't know I've got a bunch of positions in oil they've not done well at all Enbridge is an exception but Enbridge is not just oil strictly an, a crude producer it's not even a crew producer at all. It's a pipeline company, but it's still in the energy sector. So if I was to pick energy, though, those are the kind of stocks I'm gravitating towards. Enbridge, although Enbridge is a little bit expensive. Alta Gas. Alta Gas is one of my picks for, I believe it was, was it May? It's done well. <laughs> Surprisingly. I believe my top three picks for May was something crazy like uh, Chartwell Retirement Residences. No. Northwest Healthcare Properties, Alta Gas, and Barrick Gold Corp. Alta Gas has done pretty good so far this month. I mean, it's up from 17 bucks to 18 bucks. ABX is down, I'd, I'd assume. Let's see what it's done for the month. Yeah, Alta Gas is also 
somewhat of a utility company, so that's why I like it. I like those companies that are going to not get crushed in the next recession. Let's face it. Utility codes, the stock value might be pretty high, but the earnings are not going to get destroyed compared to your tech company that's selling things that people can do without. But I'm just thinking long term. Yo, here we go. Barrick is down from 1840 to 17. Yeah, man, check out Alta Gas. Now, I've been with the company for a long, long, long time, like years. And it's been uh, a crap show. And I'll explain to you why, real quick, real quick. Alta Gas was a $20, $30 stock, then it slid all the way down to 12 bucks. They bought a huge pipeline for over $8 billion. People said they overpaid. Then there was a management change, CEO change, a bunch of stuff happened. The company's been recovering. It's looking a lot stronger now. They cut their dividend in half back here, back in, uh, or it was early 2019. The stocks started to run. So I'm hoping that it keeps recovering. I'd love to see Alta Gas in the 20s. So yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. But I think it's one of the, I think it's a rebound. It's a recovery story that could happen. Which uh, there's not many opportunities in the market anymore. Like that. In that sector. That I would actually invest into. So. What else we got here? Vaccine company since it plummeted a few months ago. Dang man, I'm not much of a, I'm not much of a uh, pharma investor. Don't really do pharma vaccines and stuff. Chesapeake Energy, CHK. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much it, guys. Do you have any other? Stocks you're looking at, requests, things you want me to look at. Today was a pretty good stream though. Like, we covered a lot of stuff. ACB Canopy, the energy sector. <laughs> Sandy, yep. Yeah. Well, the thing was, I, uh, I, found an, I found a tissue. So I'm feeling a little bit better. <sighs> but it's... um. What's up, Max? Max is back. All right, let's take a look at pump. Let's take a look at pump for Max. Yeah, guys, today was pretty good, honestly. Um, we covered a lot of stuff. Glaxo produce Luza Lucazad. Ooh. Barrick reports tomorrow before the bell. Looking forward to that. We are we are getting straight into earnings season. Hey Nick. Nice, a beverage company. Cool. Uh, let me just uh, pull up our watch list because I want to add that if that's a. Another small cap beverage company. That's like one of the only niches I'm looking to add to. Yeah, sorry, Max. I wish RNX was up like 50% and I could just... It's the other way around. So pumps down to 18 cents. <clears throat> Pumps looking like, you know what guys, it's cooling off a bit. I would wait till 16, 17 cents if I was looking at pump just based on that simple chart. Looks like it's gonna drop a little bit more. Tinley Beverage Company. Oh, 
Oh, Cisco Mining. Hemp infused beverages and supplements. Very interesting. You guys know I like these little companies. 59 million dollar market cap. Let's see what they've been up to recently. Let's go. Huh. Looks like it's going to drop to into the 50s, but overall, chart looks pretty good. Looks like it's got room to run. We did see highs of almost 2 bucks, so Got any news on the company? Tinley Beverage. Tinley Company will be one to watch in 2019. First Canadian cap. First Canadian capital for IR. Not any recent news in the company. But we will add that to our watch list. So that's ticker symbol TNY. Thank you for that. Surprise is not on there already. Good stuff, guys. All right, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for the ad. We've got another company on our watch list. I believe we're over 100 weed companies now. It's crazy. Just keep on building that watch list. If you guys ever want any of my watch lists, message me in the Discord group, and I can just send you the, the uh, spreadsheet file. All you got to do is upload it to investing.com, and then you're good to go. So there's a link to our Discord group. I know most of you guys are in there, but if you want to reach me, just... Don't hesitate. Send me a message. I'll send you those watch lists. And that's pretty much it. We've got two minutes left. So anything else? Two minutes. I'm having another cup of tea. I rarely drink tea, but you know. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on in the general. We got one more member. All right, so let's see if we hit 600 people yet. 36 plus. We're so close. <laughs> We're at like 597 people. Ooh, that's a great last question, man. This is it, but safe's down to 32, man. Earnings, <laughs> earnings are still not out, but they should be out by next week, I believe. That's what they were saying next week. Earnings out by the 13th or the 14th for safe. Anytime, man, if you believe in the company, I mean, I do believe in the company. I'm tempted to add another thousand bucks. You know what? I might add another thousand bucks today. We'll see. Safe at 32. I'm so tempted. 32 cents. It's look, it looks pretty good at 32 cents. We're going to have to do a disclaimer. So, guys... Just because I said that to purchase capital is for education, information, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy any stocks because I said I like it or I said I'm buying. Always do your own research and due diligence. <laughs> Safe does look like FSD's charts, but hopefully next week we see a pop to 50 cents. Anyways, um, that's it for that's it for today, guys. <laughs> Thank you for tuning into my stream as always. And um, if you do buy safe, good luck.
don't buy it because I said so. I'll see you guys in the Discord group. I'm out. It's 11.01.